My name is Jojo. I'll be your guide for the next few minutes. We'll be working. It's a working we'll go down here to the male slave dungeon. We'll talk about the bridge we have here. We'll go down to the female slave dungeon. We'll climb up to the governor's residence and end up at the church. But before we start this, the girls, watch your feet. While men were dying here calling for help, crying, dying here, above this place, up here, was a church. So, hallelujah was said up there. Allah believe us yourself up there. The men were dying down here. And this is a security hole. Just in front of the church, that after the church service, they started to witness how slaves were carrying down here. Ironically, they went up here. Let's move down to the last chamber. Illegally, it was going on here. We had a governor called George McLean. When George McLean became the governor, he ensured that slavery was abolished to signify that he closed the town. That is why we have the tunnel sealed. So we'll not be able to walk through. But I will show you part of the tunnel. We'll also walk on top of the tunnel as well. What you see here is a shrine. African belief system. So Africans believe that God exists, but natural things were used as objects of worship. So there was a big rock here that the natives used to worship. But when Europeans took over the land, they prevented the natives from worshiping here. So part of the bigger rock, these two stones were taken out of the bigger rock and to the town where they were worshiping. And after slavery was abolished, it was brought back to its original place. Cape Coast here, there are 77 of state courts, and this is one of them. One of the three. And the separation is because those are not bigger. These are Europeans. So you see, even in death, there is diversity in there. Now, PQ here stands for Philip Kwaku. Philip Kwaku's father was a slave maker, selling slaves to the British. And because of the relationship the father had with the Europeans, Philip Kwaku was given a scholarship at age 11 to study abroad. He went to England together with other two, William and Thomas. William and Thomas died two months reaching England. But Philip Kwaku, 
at age 24 was ordained a priest. And he is the first black man to be ordained a priest. He came back and he was the pastor of the church. You know the church I showed you when we were down there? Yeah. This is the church up here. Oh. Okay. Now, people see him as a betrayal of trust because whilst preaching up here, his natives were down there dying. Other people see him as a hero because through him we got formal education. Depending on the eye you will take to see him a hero or a betrayer, he died age 75 and was buried there around 1816. Let's move here and talk about the three here. The three here are all Europeans. The first one here is called C.B. Whitehead. C.B. Whitehead was an army commander. A soldier came in here and died around 1812. He was 38 when he died. The cause of death is unknown. But once buried here, we believe you'll be one of the important people around. Army commander. Army commander. Now, the one in the middle is a lady by the name Leticia Elizabeth Lender. Now, Leticia is the wife of the Governor George McLean. She came to visit the husband, only to die in two months. There are speculations to her death. One school of thought has it that uh, malaria might have killed her. But there were rumors in the town that also suggest that as at the time she came, the husband, George McLean, had a mistress who was a Ghanaian called Ellen Bannerman. So out of jealousy, she took poison. The last one here is called George McLean, and he is the governor. George McLean was the governor, appointed the governor around 1830. He was a Scottish. came in here and abolished slavery around 1833. George McLean designed the bond that paved way for the colonization of Ghana for 100 and Now, George McLean designed that bond for the colonization of Ghana. He also built us the first Western type of judicial court. And up here is the first judicial court in Ghana. Now, this is the female slave guide. Two of them. One here, one at the opposite side. The number of females were 300. Yes. So we had 1,000 men, 300 females. 150 here, yeah, they were treated just like the men. Fed twice, more than eating, eating also in their pounds. They had clothes to cover their chest and then their waist as well. Now, while they were here, Defecation was done here. People who really vomit blood food particles were left on the floor here. And they were sleeping here as well. So even if you are in the time of the month, go back to you. They were all here for the rest. Yet they were attractive for rape. Now most of them, most of the ladies who got raped, most of them got pregnant. And if you are pregnant, you are taken to the town. Nurses took care of them till they gave birth. When you give birth, the child is taken from the mother, and the mother is brought back to the land of the next batch of steps. So these kids never knew their mothers. They were given European names Roxy, Addison, Ferguson, Morris, Addison, Dawson, Anderson, and the Simpsons. These names are very common when you come to the coastal areas of Ghana. They were the ones who were the largest. And they started formal education. It is called a door of no return because no person went through this door and had the opportunity of coming out. This door, as you see, as big as it is, wasn't as it is, it was a small door. Should you go to the inner castle and find a room that was return? Now, it was made this big because after the abolition of slavery, Cape Coast was made the first capital city of Ghana. It is a place. Back here, we have door of return. 1998, we celebrated Emancipation Day, where two slaves taken from the castle, Samuel Capson was in New York, Madame Crystal was in Jamaica. They were dead, so their skeletons was assumed and brought back to Ghana. Through the same scene, they passed through the same door of no return. Ceremonies was held for them at the courtyard. Now they are buried in a same mansion where the slave took their last bath to represent that all the enslaved Africans were taken from here. Two of them have returned home, so their descendants should trace their route back to their native home. Going back, like the name suggests, no person came in here and survived. The ladies had a punishment cell, they had ventilation. This place is a condemned cell, there is no ventilation for them. Don't worry, go inside them. Now, enslaved Africans were fighting for their rights, and fighting for your rights, you seem to be rebellious. So, being rebellious, they brought them here. In this particular place, there is no ventilation, no food, no water, pure toxicity. 
You are going in to see how the place is. Please watch your head so you don't know. We will add more to them. Maximum one day, all the slaves. Okay. Now, since they go out for two days, they open this door just to peep through if there are less slaves here. They bring these dead bodies out, show them to the other slaves. So psychologically, they break you down so you don't prepare. We are not supposed to die here. Please, let's move on. This place is known as Palava Hall. Palava Hall. Palava is a position where we need going for completion. Now, this no, place is, was the first point of call for the slaves. What about the slaves were captive? This is the first room they bring them. Do you see that round building with the red top? Yeah. On the hill? It's a fort. We call it Fort William. So Fort William was built as a security check post for the castle. Wherever intruders are approaching, those in Fort William are let the soldiers arm themselves, the cannons are loaded. So the sheets and these balls bring forth the ships. Now you can see that some of the cannons are loaded to the town as well. So you can After slave trade was abolished, George Martin built the first western type of uh, fort, judicial fort. This place was built around 1834, and George McKinney was the first judge to be in here. He himself was a lawyer by profession. He became the first judge to be here. Architectural design did not change anything here. Silver cases were held here as well. Silver cases. This place is the governor's living room. The governor's living room. This place was for one person, only the governor. Meanwhile, 300 ladies at a female slave camp. One person enjoying this one. Enough ventilation, nice view, looking at the ocean as well. Apart from the living room, the governor also had a bedroom. And this is the bedroom for the governor as well. Come with me here. This is the governor's bedroom. Governor's bedroom. Also having five windows here. Also having five windows here is the governor's bedroom. Now, Leticia, the governor's wife, died here. She poisoned herself here. And standing here, the governor also communicated with those in Fort William, just up there. From which way to? Built as a security check post. The bedroom. But it was just one of the governors. This place was built 1665. So there were several governors that came around for George McKinney. It reached the point that George McLean was also demoted when the wife died. The Queen of England had to bring another governor. And then George McLean was made there. That is the Catholic Church. And because of the churches around the side, this place is known as the Chapel Square. Uh, okay. The Chapel Square. Now let's move from here. Let's go down to see the governor's reception. Now this place is a reception area for the governor. After hard day's work, they needed to enjoy. And this is the place they came. It was formerly the church. We have turned into children's library. Kids come in here now to learn. But this was the formerly the, the, the church. Churches in Ghana started from the castle. The first church in Ghana was the Catholic church, brought by the Portuguese, built in the Elmina Castle, at the middle of the Elmina. Now, the Presbyterian Church was hosted at the Christian Buck Castle, built by the Danes, on top of the male slave dungeon. This is the Anglican Church. Formerly, it was known as SPG, Society for the Propagation of the Gospel. Later, changed into the Anglican Church. It was headed by Reverend Thomas Thompson. Later, we have Philip Quack becoming the pastor here as well. So, while slave trade was going on, down the church service was happening here. And there's a security hole just in front of the church. Now, the church service, they stand here to witness how slaves were faring down there. Ionically, heaven up here, hell down here. Matanese church come out, came out from this church, and they were having their service at where the graves are. Now, some of the soldiers had a problem with Philip Park being a black man and giving them communion. So they came out from the Anglican church and formed the Matanese church. They were having their service down here. Slave trade ended here, 1833, by the governor, George McLean. But it's still going on, branded in a new way, giving a new name business. We have child trafficking, molestation, rape, racism. These are form of slavery. And when we come here, the education is that these things have to stop. So just like Bob Marley said, we have to emancipate our minds from mental slavery. 
Practically, you have to do. Never again should this thing happen. You might have read about the story or heard about it, but coming here yourself, experiencing it, you see how our ancestors went through in this particular transatlantic slave trade. Too soon, we've come to the end of our tour of the castle. My name is Jojo.